there has never been a better time to be a woman. It was less than 100 years ago when women in the United States gained the right to vote. And now, women can even run for president and run for Congress. And they are doing it. But at the same time, we're simply not there yet when it comes to gender equality. One in three women globally have experienced domestic violence, and one in four girls will be married before the age of 18. And it was less than three years ago when Malala, my role model, was shot in the head by the Taliban because she wanted to get an education. It was only this year when women in Saudi Arabia got the right to vote, and they still can't drive, and they still have to have male guardians to get permission from them to travel, conduct official business, or undergo medical procedures. In the United States, women still only earn 78 cents for every one dollar that a man earns. So, as this shows, we're not there yet when it comes to gender equality. Gender inequality is an incredibly complex problem with numerous causes. In my talk, I will not only focus on one cause, and it's that Women's voices just aren't being heard, and this applies especially in governments, where governments have the power to make change. 21.8% of all parliamentary seats worldwide are held by women. 27.3% of our parliamentary or congressional seats are held by women, and less than 10% of international peace negotiators are women. So, why does this matter? This matters a lot. This matters because 50% of the population is being represented in their governments by much smaller percentages. So then women's issues are brushed aside. They're brushed under the carpet and they're marginalized. What can we do about this marginalization of women's issues? Again, I don't have the solution to gender inequality, but I only want to focus on two solutions that I think will help give women more voice. And the first is that we need more women leaders, especially in governments where these big changes can happen. Women don't have enough confidence, and it's so true. I see it all the time. I've noticed it since middle school and throughout high school. When, whenever the teacher asks for a volunteer in class, more often than not, I've noticed that it's the boys who raise their hands and the girls who lean back. And I've noticed that a lot of my friends who are girls will often question their capabilities and joke about, oh, I'm so stupid, even if they're incredibly intelligent. And as a matter of fact, no woman is going to be elected if she doesn't have the confidence to raise her hand in class or if she's constantly questioning if she's good enough. So I know it may seem a little bit far-fetched to just say, women need to be more confident because how? Well, let me tell you that I'm not on the stage because I'm naturally confident. I'm on the stage because I've lied to myself. If you feel that you don't have the confidence to be a leader, fake it until you become it. Lie to yourself and tell yourself that I'm amazing, I'm beautiful, I have so much potential and I am confident. I have the potential to be a leader. And you may feel like you're lying to yourself at first, but eventually you'll be so convinced that you will be confident. We need to have more girls lie on themselves and say, I'm confident, so that more women can be leaders and so that their voices can be heard in governments. And even if you don't want to go into government, we need to have people speak out about gender inequality. Because gender inequality is unfair. It's unfair how millions of girls don't feel their human rights are being protected. It's unfair how our society pushes our boys more to be successful and competitive in academics and in their careers. And we push our boys to be strong and to not show emotion. And we push, we tell our girls to be weak and we tell them to attain unattainable beauty standards. It's not fair how women's voices and men's voices aren't being heard equally in governments and elsewhere. I want to end this talk on a high note. I believe that my generation will be the one to really push the boundaries and to really strive for gender equality. I think that my generation is one of the most progressive and forward thinking so far. And I want to congratulate you on that. And um, I believe that I will eventually see a day when a majority of women will feel confident that their human rights are being protected and a day when men's voices and women's voices will be heard equally. Thank you.